So, I recently got this. Um, I've called it a firmer chisel in forms. But it is, in fact, a very wide pairing chisel. The difference between a pairing chisel and a firmer chisel is that these bevels would not exist. It would be flat all the way across except for the front bevel. And those were for mortising or for cleaning out mortises, as are in fact these. But this can also be used for cleaning out or smoothing off uh, tenons and things like that. So the handle that it came with originally had, as you saw, in the and I'm showing you a photo of it right now, these leather caps which tells me that this was meant never to be used with a hammer, but obviously based on how this handle has cracked here and here, and how the dowels that held the leather butt cap in place are driven in, I suspect that someone had indeed used this with a hammer of some sort, a mallet. And uh, thinking about it, I'm not doing this to restore the chisel, I'm doing this to use the chisel. Also, in a photo that I'm showing right now, there's a big gap right here. Sing that to that to that. There is a substantial difference between this corner or this rim and this side of the rim by about sixteenth to an eighth of an inch. And that would have had an effect on the uh, handle. Uh, this one was put in and it seemed to fit just fine, but there was always a little gap. And uh, when they epoxied it in, the uh, glue that they used, which could have been about epoxy, could have been animal hide glue, I don't know what, uh, created a big plug down at the bottom. And so I had to drill all that out. So I have some thousand grit wet dry sandpaper here, and I'm just going to work off some of this. getting better. There are obviously some gouges from someone who has tried to flatten the blade a little bit more aggressively than it needed to be. But if I can get most of this darkness off, it'll still look good. It just won't be polished and brand new. It looks like this pitting that's right in here is pretty deep set. I'd have to grind that back a lot if I wanted to get rid of that pitting, but then I would lose the CE Jennings, which is the hallmark of the manufacturer, and then the touch marks of the smiths who made the blade. So um, I'm going to leave it like that for now. That could be, I'm getting closer and closer to the tip. So let me just take a measurement.
Yeah, so just a little shy. So just take off some um, this girl. Always cut more off of that to make it seat properly. It's not bottoming out. It's uh, hanging up. Just like with a real mortise and tenon in wood. Uh, that's a little off there, isn't it? So. And now this is still that much shy. Unfortunately, while paring it down, I snapped off a bit off of this back side. So, I'm uh, going to glue in a new piece of it. And compensate for the slight misalignment by taking more of this side than on the other. Almost there. Almost there. Wherever there's dark, that comes off. And I think I like that because this is now so slightly out of line that this could almost be a slick, just the way it is. I don't have to bend it up or nothing. That's more in line. Right here. That little ledge right there. Keeping it from fully seating. Now I know which way I'm going to be seating it. This is the way I'm going to be testing it. And it's in. It's a good fit. I know that that's how it's going to be. And I take off a little bit more, a little bit more. I might even just put a metal band around that. That might be fun. All right. A little bit. Off of this edge, right like that, and then I'm going to set it up. Do I want to do the metal band? I think I do. So, go find some copper and see how that works. So, I have it bottoming out inside the socket, which is what I want. 
That will ease any pressure on this rim. It's not perfect at the rim, but I'm good with that. So, the next step is to glue it home and then uh, hand sand the handle down to its final finish. I found a piece of copper, but it's just not big enough. And I could heat it up and spread it out, but that's a bit much for me. So this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to uh, glue this up, hand sand this all down. I'm using the original handle as a basis. And then uh, get back to using it. And let's uh, rough up this surface a little bit. I am looking for squeeze out here just because I want to guarantee that I have no more pressure. Good contact. Got a thin line there. Spread it out. goodly amount inside. There is an orientation. Like that. Pull that off. Pull that off. The glue has set. It's time to start hand sanding. So I'm going to be starting off with these uh, foam sanders for the unusual shape. They are marked with the grits. I'm going to start with 120 grit, go to 180 grit, because this is already done to 80 grit. But since nobody needs to see sanding, I'm just going to start it off. Uh, when I get done with that, I'm then going to move up to 220 grit and maybe 320 grit. Who knows? We'll see. Now the next thing I have to do is check this thing for flatness. I've been running it over some stones and you can see by the shininess that there's some dullness here dullness here that means that this is actually um, higher than the shiny part basically so this was never running flat against whatever it was it was cutting I've gotten it to the center but I still have to get it to the edges so before I do anything more I'm going to try to flatten out this back See if I can't get rid of some of this, whatever this other person did to it, trying to sharpen this or flatten it out. Probably ran it across the stone that had a hard edge. Uh, yeah. So I get this nice and flat on the edges and basically across here, and everything else is okay. I don't have to worry about it, but I just need it to be nice and flat across here to the edges. 